Hi guys, it's Tamara. I'm back with another video today. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. It is Monday and we are going to start our week off by continuing our conversation about relationships. But what I want to do in this video this week, um, or for today at least, is I want to talk about the genetic and the possible DNA changes that can happen that can lead us to inherit trauma and uh, this is something that I brought up last Wednesday that uh, current research studies are, are suggesting and showing that trauma may in fact be genetic so I want to talk a little bit about that today during this video. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed and for those who are not I encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the left side of the video here that way you can stick around with us um, suggest topics um, kind of um, engage in the community and and begin to kind of embrace um, self-learning that's always been uh, the purpose of this channel is to give you something to learn about right and to also um, try to answer all the questions that you may have right that's something that I seek to do so I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe and stick around with us the benefits for you in today's video is that we're going to talk about the genetic transition of trauma so I'm going to briefly cover that and I also want to briefly cover the transmission of trauma and how families do that and why that transmission becomes intergenerational trauma so last week on Wednesday I had talked a lot about this. I talked about um, post-traumatic stress disorder and some of the criterion that you have to meet and, you know, kind of how we've learned to quantify the diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the transmission of PTSD and the transmission of trauma in families, which ultimately results in what's known as intergenerational trauma. So let's start with the, the transmission of it, okay? So there's this theory called uh, cognitive behavior therapy, all right? It's the whole idea that if we have imbalanced, negative and skewed thoughts, and if we continue to hold those negative and skewed thoughts, that we can actually affect how we feel and then it'll affect how we behave, right? So kind of what we think becomes who we are and kind of how we think becomes what we do. Um, and so that's CBT. And I use that a lot with my kids. I use that a lot with my families who are dealing with trauma. In fact, uh, I am internationally certified and trauma licensed in mental health, specialized in child, adolescent and family counseling. Um, and through each of those those layers of qualifications that I have, CBT has been at the foundation. Um, and I might actually do a video on my theoretical orientation or my philosophical perspective. You guys might like that. Let me know in the comment section below if you would like to hear a video uh, that talks about like how different therapists come together and kind of create their style. You might actually like that video. But that's a side note. Um, but CBT is at the, the foundation of everything that I do. So when I see families and I want Want them to understand that trauma can be transmitted through generations. I use the CBT model to explain that. And so what I do is, let's see. So what I do is I show families, uh, let's see, I create like a little diagram. Okay. So it's a little diagram with three circles. Okay. And what I put in the first circle, circle, excuse me, are thoughts. Okay. On the left circle, feelings. Okay. And on the right circle, behaviors. All right. So this is kind of what I do. I show my family something like this, just as a visual. Okay. To kind of give them a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about and kind of where I'm going with this. All right. So my whole theory is this, that trauma, uh, when we're talking about trauma being environmental, right, we're not even talking about the neurology of it. We're not even talking about the physiological parts of trauma. We're talking about the, the environmental influence. Okay. So when we're talking about environment, we're talking about a connection between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. If you had a mother who was being abused and neglected and she grew up and decided to have you, everything she has gone through prior to having you is still a part of her subconscious. It's still a part of who she's become. It's still a part of who she is as a woman. And so she begins to parent you 
based on what she now knows or doesn't know. She also begins to parent you based on a lack of knowledge, okay? And that lack of knowledge gets transmitted and transferred to you. Does that make sense, guys? So it gets transmitted and transferred to you. Well, how does that happen environmentally? Well, her thoughts become her behavior. All of her thoughts lead to how she's feeling, which leads to her behavior, and her behavior leads to how she's going to parent you. So in that way, right, things are being transmitted to you that way environmentally. Well, how she thinks influences how she feels and how she feels influences how she behaves and how she behaves in turn influences how she parents you. So trauma can be transferred that way or transmitted that way. It can also be transmitted through DNA. There's a study about civil war prisoners, okay? And the study basically focuses on the, the traumatic and psychological um, changes that they had to go through in the Civil War. And what's interesting is later in history, far, you know, far beyond the Civil War, so many years after that, transmission of trauma was a thing in the family of those who had served in the Civil War. There's another study being done uh, on epigenetic markers. And I will put the definition of that up here. There's this, another study being done by Randy. Um, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Randy Jurdle at NSU. Um, I hope I'm saying his last name correctly. I'm going to put it over here for you so that you can kind of Google search it yourself and see what he's up to. But he does a, he did a study on um, epigenetic markers, and he basically said that when trauma occurs, it, it, it affects us like a computer software, right? The, the, the process of the changes that happens with DNA and, and DNA structures and, and hormones and uh, biomarkers and all of that interesting scientific stuff, he says it's like computer software. And when trauma happens, it disrupts that software and it creates DNA changes that can ultimately impact us, right? It can impact a woman who is going to be having a baby, right? Because once that DNA and once those biomar biomarkers begin to change, so does the, the female's physiological structure as well. And so then that's how trauma gets transmitted, right? Uh, we also have another theory that's known as methylation. Methylation, all right, I'm gonna put that word over here. Methylation uh, basically is another way to say epigenetic change. And the whole idea behind that is that um, methylation um, really does change the DNA segments or the DNA structures um, and changes the biomarkers and the chemical processes that make up who we are as individuals. And so, you know, if um, an individual has experienced trauma, uh, that can be transmitted through DNA, through biomarkers, through biological and scientific processes that, you know, really does not require my expertise. We would need to talk to a scientist about that. But um, the changes that occur can ultimately affect other processes uh, within us and, and so therefore be transmitted that way, all right? There's also uh, some other theories, like, you know, research is, and I'm going to put these in the description box for you below as well, but research has also been done on racism and stress and how that can affect DNA structure, it can affect biomarkers, it can affect physiological pieces of who we are, and it can become a piece of who we are, right? So, you know, all the trauma that we're dealing with can, can cause physiological changes, it can cause DNA changes and biological changes, neurological changes that can create trauma within us, right? Uh, another theory is utilizing the mental illness biological paradigm to understand trauma. The whole idea behind uh, 
mental illnesses such as bipolar and schizophrenia is that there's an actual biomarker or an actual gene. Um, some people call it the bipolar gene or the schizophrenic gene, but it's a gene that uh, families with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder have, and it makes you more susceptible to getting bipolar or schizophrenia. It's really interesting how um, biology and DNA can kind of come together and create an individual just based based on uh, cellular changes and molecular changes and neurological changes. So I'm going to put a couple of resources in the description box for you below. That way you can get a little bit more education about this and, and begin to talk more about it. All right. So don't think that this is the end of this because we're going to continue to talk about this and explore it as well. Thank you so much for being with me today. I will see you on Wednesday with another bonus video. Bye-bye.